Welcome. This is an explanation about calculating CPI values using an iPad app called Explain Everything. Hopefully this is going to be a substitute for Pencast. Alright, so let's go. So how does it all start? Well, what we've got to do is establish a basket of goods and services that the typical New Zealand household buys on a regular basis. We'll just refer to that as the basket. And then what we do is we measure <coughs> how expenditure on this basket changes through time. We me measure the expenditure required <coughs> to purchase this basket of goods and services every three months. So, so what I'm going to do is I'm going to allow capital E to extend to stand for expenditure. Remember what expenditure is, it's just price times quantity. And because we've got a number of goods, we'd have to symbol it this way. <coughs> so for each, <coughs> uh, for each um, item in our basket of goods and services, we'd multiply its price times the number of units that we purchase. And uh, what we'd do is we'd sum up all of those purchase values to give us an overall expenditure on the basket. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to use some subscripting. So for instance, EO will be the uh, period when we first calculate the expenditure on the basket. E1 will be the next period when we again calculate the expenditure. E2, the period after that. Alright, so let's just go and do exactly that expenditure calculated for the basket first time expenditure calculated for the basket the second time third time fourth time so on and so forth as they say all right so what we really need is we really need an index value I mean, in calculating CPI, use uh, Les Bouvier's price index, but that's getting a bit complicated. So, uh, to put it in its rawest form, uh, what you do is you have an have an end value and a beginning value of something, and that will give you an index. Either the index value will be uh, greater than one. Or less than one. All right. So let's do our first uh, CPI index uh, calculation. So we talk about the base period, and the funny thing about the base period is that the end value and the beginning value are one and the same. In other words, what I'm going to do here is I'm going to write EO divided by EO, and that's going to give us one. We just do that to get the series started. Alright, what's, what's the next calculation going to be? Well, hopefully you can say to yourself, it's going to be E1 divided by EO. So maybe that'll give us a value of 1.23. What about the next one? Well, that'll be E2 over EO. Let's say that gives a value of 1.56. Remember, these values I'm just pulling out of the air just for illustrative purposes. And let's count these time periods. One, two, th three, four. So this is the fourth time period, but in terms of the uh, subscripting, it shouldn't be four, should it? It should really be, be three. So let's go in and set it up. Now notice how these things are increasing in time. Because really, if you've got um, prices increasing, <coughs> then the expenditure on the basket is increasing over time. So you expect these values here to be getting uh, greater. What I'm going to make this one, I'll make this one 1.87. Now, these are not easy numbers to work with. So what we do is we, is we dress them up by multiplying by a thousand. 
So can I'm, I'm just going to move to the to the next page. So let's just remember what we had here. Two, three, one. Is that a five? I think it is. All right. So what we're going to do is we're going to multiply these by a thousand. So that's going to become a thousand. That's going to become. Do you recognise them? These are the these are the CPI index values that we see in the Stats New Zealand spreadsheet. If you like, I'm going to get technical. These are the all groups CPI values, and it's these. It's, it's these that we use in this calculation to work out the rate of inflation. How are we going to do that? It's going to be that formula. Shall we turn the page and, and, and apply that formula? All right. K. Okay. I've gone over the page. Let me just put these values up in the dressed up form. Now we could give these things a time reference, couldn't we? Uh, this could be for quarter one, quarter two, quarter three and quarter four of some particular year. I mean, I don't know what the year is. If you, if you wanted to, we could say that's for 2013. And these are the CPI uh, index values for all groups. Right, so what we want to do is we want to know what the rate of inflation has been, say, between quarter two and quarter three. So that's what we want. We want to know what the rate of inflation has been between those two quarters. Alright, so we just write up our, our little formula. Remember, it times it by 100. We're, we're not multiplying by by a thousand because we do that when we apply Les Bouillers price index when we do that other calculation here we're calculating the rate of inflation not CPI index values alright so this means put the end CPI index value in the subscript here means put the beginning CPI index value in to the formula. So look, let's do exactly that. Here's, here's the beginning and here's the end. So I'm going to go 1560 minus 1230 over 1230 times 100. It seems reasonable to me. The more we, you know, another reasonable thing is to do is to pick my phone. It's a bit too early in the morning to be doing these calcs in your head. Right, so 1560 minus 1230 is going to give me 330 divided by 1230 divided by 1230 and that's, uh, that's going to give me uh, 0.268. I'll just report it to uh, three, three decimal places, and that's going to be times 100. And so the answer is going to be 26.8%. Whoa, that's a big range of inflation between quarter two and quarter three of 2013 that would be like 
having hyper inflation. But remember, <clears throat> I'm just doing this for illustrative purposes, so uh, the numbers can be a little bit un unrealistic. Alright, so what we're going to do now is I'm going to get you to do the, the same calculation going from quarter three to quarter four. So what I should do is turn the page. Things are looking a little bit messy, so we'll, we'll just turn the page. So the year is 2013. We've got uh, quarter three and we've got quarter four. What are those uh, CPI values? Uh, one is 1560 and the other one is 1870. Okay, guys, what I want you to do is I, find, I want you to find the rate of inflation. By how much has the expenditure on that basket of goods and services increased between quarter three and quarter four of 2013? Yeah, now I'm waiting for you. You're doing it? Alright, so this is your beginning value, this is your end value. Let's write up, always write up your formula. Your formula guides you in terms of what you have to do. Alright, so um, ending value is 1870 minus beginning value 1560 divided by 1560. Uh, times a hundred. Bring out your trusty cell phone. Everybody needs to, it needs to be a smartphone, doesn't it? Calculators are pretty good on them. One eight seven o minus one five six o equals three ten divided by one five six o divided by one five six o equals. That's going to be. Point one nine eight. So, oh, look, I'm gonna I'm gonna round up to to three decimal places again, and that's gonna be times a hundred, and so that's gonna be nineteen point nine percent. So, th this is our this is our rate of inflation for the quarter, isn't it? I mean, what what we could do is we could annualise it. So I'm gonna I'm gonna rough it up, or we'll round it up to twenty percent. So how many quarters are there in a, in a year? Well, there are four. So if I multiply that by four, and so what we can say is the estimated annualised rate of inflation is going to be eighty percent. I mean, that's huge for our economy. That's real hyperinflation. It's unlikely that we would ever experience that. Okay, so that's just extending our knowledge a little bit more. So just coming back to this value here, what does it what does it what does it really mean? <clears throat> well, it, it, it means at, at the end of three months you're going to have to spend twenty percent more to acquire that same basket of goods and services that you purchased in quarter three of 2013. All right, well look, I'm gonna um, call it here. This is my first use of this Explain uh, Everything app. Um, I don't know, has it been useful? Well, could you could you let me know? Just maybe send me an email, or just uh, you know, stop me after class and say, hey, I found that useful. Could you produce some more? All right. So I'll wait to hear from you before producing any more. Okay. Catch ya.